So uh, this is the 100th species for our project. Uh, so that's a good milestone for now. This may be the first time this species of nudibranch, Fidiana militaris, has been documented on this coast by citizen scientists and researchers. We're in Vishakapatnam, a port city in India's state of Andhra Pradesh. Vishakapatnam, also called Vizag, is just one of the places where citizens are actively contributing to scientific research. And this hobby is having real-world impacts. It's expanding our understanding of the range and threats to plants and animals worldwide. In 2022 alone, scientists published more than 800 studies using data that nature enthusiasts help collect on citizen science apps like iNaturalist and eBird. The rate at which citizens are submitting observations is growing rapidly. 33 million observations were added to iNaturalist and 4.6 million to eBird in 2022. And hundreds of thousands of people continue to add observations every single day. They are documenting a range of information, such as the animals spotted on migration routes, the timing of plants flowering, and the abundance of pollutants like plastic. At first glance, Vizag might seem like just another industrial town. It's one of the largest cities in Andhra Pradesh, home to more than 2 million people. The town has a large fishery and steel manufacturing, as well as one of the busiest ports in India. But it's also surrounded by a diverse range of ecosystems, nestled between the Eastern Ghats mountain range and the Bay of Bengal. These ecosystems are attracting citizen scientists who are keen to go out and explore. We are very, very fortunate that we live in Vizag and uh, the uh, incredible Sada. diversity, biodiversity of Vizag is uh, accessible. There are rolling hills on one side of the city, there is beach on the other side and there are all sorts of different forests, there are mangroves, there are uh, so many different tree species. That was Shravya Garuda. She and her daughters have been documenting biodiversity around Vizag since they moved to the city before the pandemic of COVID-19. I started this journey with my kids about three years ago and uh, we, we still haven't skimmed the surface of what's out there and what we can learn from individuals and organizations established in Vizag. So we have done tide pooling, we have done bird, bird watching, watching we have done heritage walks and we have done so many things. But again, we have been able to do it you know, just in bits and pockets, and there is so much more to do. She was the reason for us to get interested, uh, to learn about our surroundings, because she had so many questions. Why do crabs walk sideways? Why do animals have four legs? A citizen science is mostly understanding what's around us. When we give it bigger words or make it uh, sounding a bit difficult that's when it kind of puts off people but to make it simple that that is citizen science it, it can be simple it can be just peripheral it doesn't have to go deep down but just knowing about many things around us that that is incredibly helpful uh, i just don't feel like it's a work i feel like it's a hobby kind of thing with the help of citizens like shravya and aditi Researchers are working on mapping out the biodiversity of the city. For years, Sri Trakra Pranav Tamarapali and his team have taken Vizag residents on tide pooling walks to observe and document species. Their organizations, East Coast Conservation Team and Wilded India are organizing events around the city's various ecosystems. As they encourage people to take an interest in their surroundings, they also remind everyone to avoid handling wildlife and to minimize harm on the species they share their city with. We started a project called Intertidal Biodiversity of Andhra Pradesh, uh, which is mainly to record intertidal organisms. As we have diurnal tides, we'll get low tide uh, two times in a day. So when, that, uh, when we get the low tide, small pools will be exposed. In that time, uh, animals living in that specific area will come out and they will come for food only. So we can see those animals in the specific time. That is so-called tide pooling. Initially, we used to collect data ourselves. So we used to take photos of the organisms uh, at different angles so we can identify it at uh, species level. Uh, the ones that we cannot identify, 
we would uh, send the photos uh, for a further understanding to other experts in the field later we came we we, we started taking people to do tide pooling so that's when we thought there should be a platform to involve people for uh, giving data also or being part of the project so everyone whoever contributes to this uh, is a part of the project and if they contribute uh, uh, you know a considerable amount of data to the project if it's a publishable data they'll be credited for everything uh, that they provide and we use a platform called iNaturalist uh, for our project, we have created a project in iNaturalist called Intertidal Biodiversity of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, anyone with a iPhone or an Android can install iNaturalist, search for the project and join it. After they join it, if they come across any of these organisms, they can just take a photo of it and upload in it. If they don't know what fish it is, they can just tag it as fish. And there are experts and there is me who owns the project that can come and correct what fish it is. So this adds to a lot. And while doing these works, we have discovered new records of species that have not been recorded here before. So every, every shore has a specific type of ecosystem and there are various different types of species inhabiting in each of them. So uh, we have started this and we have come across other people who are doing similar kind of work in the West Coast also like there is Marine Life of Mumbai and Coastal Conservation Foundation that are doing, doing there. And also recently I came to know about Marine Life of Goa. And uh, these guys have a project called Intertidal Biodiversity of India. So once I discovered that, I've been adding observations and I've been telling people who are participating to add observations in, in theirs also. Because we all are working together for similar goal for conservation. So it makes sense to work together and share information for betterment of conservation. Recently, from 2021, there is a survey there. Okay. September, butterfly survey is there. There is an iNaturalist. So from there, we are, more people are interacted, almost all 200 plus. Beginners, they are starting asking ID. They should send, me, send photos. Okay. And uh, what is this ID? What is this um, group? That I also got questions from others. On Instagram and Facebook, one the WhatsApp group is there. Okay. Another place, butterfly group is there. Okay. Uh, uh, ten years, I know I have no WhatsApp. I know I don't know Facebook. Just Facebook is there, but um, not, not, uh, not frequently used. Yeah. So this now this uh, communication is very vast now. Anyone interested in this, they can uh, contact anyone. No one, not needed books. Yeah. Facebook, Instagram, I know just. Citizen science communities and efforts like these have helped to expand our understanding of the geographical range of plants and animals all over the world. Scientists and conservationists can't be everywhere all at once. So many researchers turn to citizens to help them collect data for their studies, though the challenge of processing large amounts of data mostly falls on the researchers. Such citizen-collected data has contributed to the discovery of new species of mushrooms, snails, and more in recent years. One platform that enables these types of collaborations is the iNaturalist app. As one user put it, it's like Pokemon Go for nerds. And it has a rapidly growing user base of 2.5 million people who have recorded over 100 million verifiable observations till date. The number of annual observations has grown significantly from just over 500,000 in 2014 to over 33 million in 2022. Large data sets like these can be used to set up early warning systems when biodiversity may be at risk, a report published in November 2022 found. The authors suggest pairing data collected by citizen scientists with remote sensing systems that alert us about events like deforestation, fires, or extreme weather. When cross-referenced, this data can be used to create insights into which species are most in danger. For example, a computer system could compare where citizens have spotted koalas in Australia with where forest fires are taking place. Then, the system could create an alert about the level of threat the fires present and where the threat is the highest. This could then be used to help conservation teams decide which locations to prioritize for rescue efforts. There are some limitations to this method, though, because there are still significant gaps in global biodiversity data. One estimate suggests that 86% of the world's land species and 91% of the world's underwater species are yet to be described by science. Even for species that we're aware of, our understanding of their total geographical range might be incomplete. 
For example, in 2021, researchers documented 12 butterfly species that had never been spotted in the city of Vizag before. Mantha Ramamurti, one of the authors of the study, attributes the large biodiversity of butterflies in Vizag to the city's diverse ecosystems. Because more number of diversity in the plant world is there, we have a diversity of butterflies also. Why? Because the butterfly adults require specific flowers, nectar giving flowers. And butterfly larvae requires the separate host plants. You know. So because of the diversity of plant world, we are fortunate to have the diversity of butterflies also. There is a small patch of uh, 3000 uh, hectares of forest is there. It is called Kondapalli Reserve Forest. Uh, I started going into that forest and then uh, documenting the butterflies there. Uh, and uh, almost close to 65 to 70 species uh, we have recognized over a period of two years. That was Rajesh Varma Dasi, a banker by profession and citizen scientist on the weekends. When his job took him to Vijayawada, another city in the state of Andhra Pradesh, he and his friends began organizing biodiversity walks with students and their parents. Over the years, they documented butterflies, dragonflies, and other biodiversity in photos and checklists. And those photos and the checklist, I have given it to the forest department of AP, uh, AP forest department. The government of AP, they were kind enough uh, to set up a butterfly park in Mula, Mula Padu area. Initially, it never started as a citizen science. Uh, I was just into documenting things uh, and making uh, collaterals and uh, clicking photographs, asking people for their identifications and making checklists. You know. so when I was posted in Vijayawada, then all the stuff like you know getting kids into it, their parents into this thing, and then uh, giving them about idea about the nature in and around Vijayawada. It all started in 2019. But whenever we do this walk and whenever we interact with uh, kids, we try to tell them that using these apps will you know, contribute directly towards uh, citizen science and, and creating database for that particular area. Sometimes for a particular location, there will be no checklist at all. We have to start uh, from uh, the scratch. And that happened for uh, Kondapalli Reserve Forest also. We had to make a checklist. Uh, and, and, and when we started uh, on a project like creating checklist for uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, and Telangana, so we had to in, uh, we had to depend on a checklist that was made in 19, uh, 1990s, early 1990s or uh, late 1990s. Availability of data was really, really tough. Uh, availability was scarce and uh, getting these things uh, was really, really tough. But as the years progressed, we when we got access to these early bird uh, apps or iNaturalist things, it became really easy for us to go uh, filter an area and then see what all records are available, and and you know adding our records into it so that the list continues. Uh, and and it, it, since it's being an open platform, the access uh, of it is for everyone, any anyone with an ident ID and then just go into it and then uh, see what uh, who, what activity is happening in that area, what kind of species are available in that area. Though availability of data is improving with the help of citizen science apps, a lack of data continues to be a challenge. This can hold back researchers and policymakers working to identify the need for conservation efforts. Harsh Kumar Chauhan is a botanist from Kumal University in the northern part of India. Through his work, he has noticed a lack of data from the Indian Himalayan region. He co-authored a paper that suggests developing specialized citizen science apps to help bridge the data gap on the illegal wildlife trade across the mountain range. The Himalayan range, it cannot be monitored by one or two NGOs or uh, basically the forest department or some research organizations. The citizens should be involved in that. I believe uh, this citizen science app, it has a very huge potential in combating uh, illegal wildlife trade. We can run the uh, hotline text regarding uh, the poaching hotspots, the trade uh, route that is followed for the trading of this, uh, for carrying out this wildlife activity or certain if uh, somebody observes some group uh, carrying this illegal wildlife activity, so it can be uh, sent on this app and it can be uh, sent publicly so that uh, they can be traced. But I'm still saying the ultimate goal uh, should not be like that ki we are just uh, uh, we are putting some individuals in jail or like that. It should be managed at the community level, right? 
and for this management uh, we can have uh, different uh, uh, or research institutes uh, ngos and forest department they should work in collaboration and uh, they should use this data for basically solving the problem at local level you cannot have a uh, uh, same set of rule for this entire himalayan range so citizen science has potential for conserving this biodiversity and it is also true that uh, uh, wildlife illegal activities they are being uh, carried in himalayas it is true although we have very limited data but whatever reports uh, that are available uh, they proves that uh, illegal activities in himalayas are going on and its biodiversity is diminishing even a single species if it is lost from the ecosystem it impact the entire food chain harsh isn't the only researcher proposing a citizen science approach to understanding the impacts humans have on ecosystems researchers in vietnam identified a lack of data on the type of marine litter that can be found across the country with the help of citizens they conducted beach surveys and found that plastics like fishing gear were the most common form of marine litter Plastic can harm marine creatures when they mistake it for food or become entangled in abandoned fishing gear. Like the data collected by citizen scientists that helps us expand the known range of different species, the study on marine litter can help researchers and policymakers identify solutions to the most common forms of plastic pollution. I think citizen science can contribute in a big way uh, with the advancement of technology especially and with everybody having access to smartphones for us to be able to observe and record observe and record on a repetitive basis will contribute to having a good data pool a reliable data pool rather i feel happy that i get a more knowledge and can then tell everybody about it so we kind of downplay that bit but it's very important i felt uh, on the journey for them to express it to have that opportunity to express again it's okay if it is wrong but uh, when she explains something to somebody else as part of a larger group that really kindles a long lasting interest